Max and the natural world is another strand of Schopenhauer's world knot. It seems to me that in many ways a lump of lead or stone is somehow more physical than a cloud of gas. Its mass and density are greater and its spatial location is more precise. Obviously in the non-physical region of the scale we would put fictional characters, the legions of gods and devils. I suppose further towards physical we could place Napoleon Bonaparte who wasn't a fictional character, he was alive but he's no longer around so he's not physical at, at the moment. The phantom median eye itself does not exist independently of the brain and the surrounding structure. Atomic physics or nuclear physics or quantum physics is too low down in the hierarchy of the world or of the universe and I think really it is the way the neurons in the brain are interconnected, the signals, the action potentials and so on of neurons which constitute or create consciousness. Now there are people like Roger Penrose who's a very eminent cosmologist who believes that quantum mechanics can give the clue, I then kind of ask myself, well, why isn't a table conscious? What is it unique about the brain? You can then talk about certain structures. He talks about little tube things, which he feels are kind of uh, ideal vessels for quantum mechanical principles. But I don't actually buy that. I really think it's neurology that's going to give the clue to it. It's almost the pineal eye a priori is a barrier to true self-organisation. Removal of this component allows other components previously controlled by the pineal eye to self-organise to a greater extent. Will it be true to say that in earlier, our earlier evolutionary ancestors, their behaviour was very much more controlled by the activities of the sun than... Sure. Um, uh, that's undoubtedly true. And of course a very interesting thing about animal behaviour, and indeed plant behaviour, is that it's predictive. I mean you get plants, don't you, starting to uh, come out or be ready to come out in the spring, actually before it's spring. Now how far these are signals which determine it, how far it's got internal clocks, and of course the internal clocks are very important indeed to regulate behaviour, it's a tricky question. But I think what most people say is that a whole bunch of clocks in the nervous system which of course get upset with uh, when you change time when you're flying this is why you feel rotten when you're flying your internal clocks go wrong now these are, are set by the sun but actually they tool along by themselves with an occasional setting from the sun and these are called soft clocks which are controlled from the sun but you're not dependent on the sun all the time It'd be true to say that the evolution of consciousness looked at it as, as a process over time this breaking away of the environmental direct control by the sun is, is in fact necessary for mm. modern consciousness to, to evolve. I, I would absolutely say that, and I go further than that, I, I would say that it's uh, getting away from control by stimuli, that is inputs, uh, reflexes uh, towards internal uh, autonomous activity which can go along within your own head by itself. Uh, quite apart from the external world, which makes you intelligent, which makes you able to make decisions, which makes us, in any sense, interesting as organisms, which makes our lives interesting. All organic brains function, at least on one descriptive level, as electrical circuits. There's something called the mu state, when the system is actually de-energised, there's no power supplied. Steve Nichols makes the case that the brain could not have become self-organising in this way if its logic were set from the outside by a lockstep mechanism or external clock. A thermostat or other thresholding device is interesting in that the finite state, if it is set to this state, is a switch at which it switches on at a certain point. So basically it has two states on or off. If it has no predetermined temperature setting, it is in infinite state. For example, this setting may be determined as a result of a feedback loop or other piece of logic elsewhere in the circuit. The experimental evolvable hardware can actually change the structure of the circuit itself. The physical pineal eye seems to function as an organic type of external clock in relation to the brain seen as a circuit. Modern self-organising brains would not have evolved if this external clock were still attached. And it's actually been found that brain structures change to accommodate the new situation. Consciousness seems to have properties consistent with being a field or an analogue infinite state continuum. There is a fair analogy um, in saying that the pineal eye acts as an external clock to the um, organic brain 
um, comparing it with the um, clocking mechanism in a CPU, yes. The evidence from experiments performed on RGA circuits and modelling of brain evolution in silicon do seem to indicate what is required for brains to become self-organising. Such experiments do not demonstrate consciousness. After all, RGA circuits are not conscious. However, the presence of REM, rapid eye movement, in humans, with all of its rich accompanying mentation and dream activity, is probably indicative of consciousness in animals. Steve's 1993 MA dissertation first makes the link between loss of the pineal eye, occurrence of REM in early evolution, and the phasic transients, almost random-like activity, that takes place in all electrical circuits, during the transition from finite to infinite status? Uh, yeah, I think, I think there's something in that. We certainly, if you look at a dog, and you, th you really do believe it's dreaming, don't you, when its eyes wiggling around with, with REM? Well, rapid eye movement sleep is mm. usually taken to be an indication of dreams, and maybe dogs dream in smells as well mm. as sounds and pictures. Right. Uh, who knows? If these early connections d between the, the core parts of the brain um, predate the, the, the connections for the visual and optic system of the lateral eyes and, and through um, the even more recent auditory um, system, then, then we can see that it's somehow fundamental to, to, to behaviour. In my PhD upgrade paper, uh, Median Vision Theory, The Heretical Philosophy, I go into much more detail exploring the origins of rapid eye movement and indicate how this new appearance coincides with the evolutionary disappearance of pineal eye in nature and how it's linked to retinal production of melatonin. So, for instance, Michael Menneker points out that the production of, of melatonin, which is no longer supplied by the atrophied or atrophying median eye, is today manufactured partly by retinal movements, particularly during REM. Medium vision theory makes fairly straightforward claims here, for example, an E2 animal cannot dream because internalised mental representations are only possible with the absence of the physical median eye. REM is most often associated with the phase of vivid dreaming during mammalian sleep, but quite a strong argument is put forward.